Now, Chandrababu Naidu before the elections came out with a very great grand novel idea. Chandrababu Naidu promises smartphones to women in the rural areas. Basically, women in the rural areas are struggling for survival. For such kind of women, exclusively and wholly to drag the oars, he is promising or he has promised already smartphones to women. Now, let me tell you the calculation, very simple calculation. The smartphone normally will not be used by the women in the, in, women in the rural areas is a known fact to us. They use you know, phones, but not smartphones. Let us assume the smartphone is costing around 6000 rupees. He will buy it in the market at 10,000 rupees through his own party people and those smartphones will be given to the women in the villages and they will immediately sell the same phones for 5000 rupees to the same dealers. Ultimately, the scheme is a big flop and it is amount to thousands of crores of a big scam once again. This is the novel idea generated by Chandrababu Naidu very recently. The Honorable Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Nara Chandrababu Naidu boasts of himself as if he is a high tech personality and high tech Babu that is a nickname given to him. One more nickname is U-turn Babu. I already explained you why he is called as a U-turn Babu because of the decisions which he has taken right from 1978 to till 2018 how he has taken U-turns on package and status and changing of parties and joining with BJP, disassociating with BJP, associating with Congress, so on and so forth. He is himself calls as a high-tech Babu. As I already told you, PV Narasimha Rao is the person who brought out the software technology parks scream throughout India and that has been captured by Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh very well. It is not the Chandrababu Naidu who is responsible for this. And the scheme was continued by our honorable late Prime Minister Mr. Vajpayee at a later stage. In the state of Andhra Pradesh, it was perfectly implemented by some people like Mr. J. Prakash Narayan, Hanman Chaudhary, J. A. Chaudhary, so on and so forth. At the country level, it was implemented by somebody else. In addition to this thing, I also would like to tell to the citizens of this country about Mr. Nara Lokesh the son of Mr. Chandrababu Naidu. He says that, you know, Lokesh is from Harvard University and he is a very intelligent person that think this thing so on and so forth. Let me tell you, my dear citizens of this country, it is very unfortunate to see that kind of personality in the ministry, point number one. The second point is, it is very surprising to me how a world renowned university like Stanford has given him a seat. It is a matter of insult to the Stanford University itself. Anyhow, happened is happened, forget about it. Now, if you talk about his wife, Mrs. Brahmini, is 1 lakh times much, much, much better than Mr. Lokesh Nara. She is also from Stanford University, but the way she talks, she convinces, she explains the facts and figures she presents, the way he interacts with the people the logistics, logical, moral, legal, ethical, so on and so forth, she is 1 lakh times better than Mr. Nara Lokesh. I request the hem of the fires at Bharatiya Janata Party with a specific reference to the Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi, Mr. Amit Shah, Nitin Gadkari, Piyush Goyal, Suresh Prabhu, and of course, not forgetting Chinnama, so on and so forth. Please not to associate with people like Chandrababu Naidu, even if you happen to get 200 MP seats in the forthcoming elections. Please do not worry, in spite of losing the ground in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Jharkhand in the recent elections, still the BJP party is strong enough to get not less than 200 C MP seats to the best of my knowledge and belief. And there is no need to associate with people like Chandrababu Naidu. Please do not commit the mistake once again. Let him go and join with Congress, whether they will get 44 seats or 22 seats, we are not much bothered. Once again, I am repeatingly telling you, sir, please do not entertain Chandrababu Naidu to come near, because Chandrababu Naidu is such a kind of personality, 
he may go to any extent that is what I explained you earlier, any extent exclusively and wholly to come into the power. Repeatedly, I am requesting you, sir, please do not entertain him again and again and again and again and do not commit the mistake again, do not bother even if you happen to get only 200 seats, still we will have a strong government. As a citizen of this country, I expect a solid, strong, progressive government at the center and also a strong, solid government in the state of Andhra Pradesh. I think to the best of my knowledge and belief and based on the information what I have in my position, I think this is the right time for me to talk about uh, a specific issue related to media, especially the Telugu media and a well known personality Sri Ramaji Rao, the owner of ETV, ETV 1, ETV 2, so on and so forth along with Margadarshi financiers, Margadarshi cheat funds, you know, so on and so forth. Income tax department has conducted a ride for violating some of the provisions of the Income Tax Act of 1961, way back uh, on uh, to be more precise, to be more specifically on 24th July 2008, the department has filed a case and imposed a penalty of 1200 crores on Mr. Ramaji Rao and the case was not yet settled. When this is the kind of attitude with the media, Telugu media specifically, is it right on our part to believe these kind of medias? I brought forward this fact and figure in connection with Chandrababu Naidu and in this video. Now, the choice is left to the media and as well as to the citizens of this country to decide. More information is available, you can go through any of the websites. He has also violated some of the provisions of the Banking Regulation Act and RBI Act and all against which a penalty can be imposed twice the amount of uh, mismanagement and in not less than 2 years of imprisonment. I request the Honorable Prime Minister of India Mr. Narendra Modi and his colleagues to take a decision on this to make known to the people what kind of action the BJP is going to take on these kind of persons, attitudes, atro atrocities, you know violation of legal provisions including and not limited to the RBI Act, Banking Regulation Act, Income Tax Act, it's GST, Customs and even the fundamental principles of the constitution at large.